Hello, hello, hello. Welcome. It's uh, Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. I am coming at you live from outside of Charleston, South Carolina. And I had a little bit of technical difficulty going on, so I might be running a little bit behind. Um, what I wanted to do is wait and see till we can get a couple people jumping on here and see if my video is going okay here. Hi, Kimberly. Hi, Wanda. So is the video okay? I've had, I was having a little bit of issue with my internet, so I want to make sure that they're good. Hey, Christopher. Oh, we got lots of people jumping on, Tabitha. So I'm expecting quite a few to jump on. So while y'all are doing that, if anybody can give me any feedback on how the internet connection is, if my video is doing okay, got a thumbs up. Wonderful. Hi, Tabitha. Hi, Wanda. Um, so I think we're going to be a little bit delayed in our responses. This is an interactive. Oh, thank you, Teresa. Thank you, Wanda. I got all beautiful just for y'all. So, um, I'm really doing this thing where I'm working on my makeup a little bit better and just getting it all popping the way I want to. So that's what we girls do. Hi, Darlene. So I'm expecting quite a few of you to jump on. Now I'll tell you right straight up. I am, um, one of those people that I just like to kind of dig into a lot of information and I'm an information sharer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give a few minutes for people to come on. Hey, Nikki. And while they're, while they're getting ready and coming that way, let me see if I can get you guys. Hi, Jennifer. Um, I know this is a little bit of a different platform than what you guys are used to. Um, I did want to do the Zoom so we could get a little more interactive and share files, but I think I found a way around that. So, hopefully, um, on, on the actual event, if you guys would please um, let me know. Um, you know what? I'm not sure. Is this inside the event that you guys are seeing me? I hope it is. Hmm. Let's check it out. I hope that y'all are inside the event. If not, I'll place a link. It'll be okay. I don't need to check. So I'm trying my best not to, hey Mary, not to interrupt the internet. So while people are jumping on, I'm going to show you guys why taquito. Um, taquito. Huh, it's not a taquito. It's why taquito. So um, these are some before and afters of my family and I. And as you can see, we've done really well as a family. Um, that's my before and this is two months ago. So I look better now. Just so you know <laughs> uh, This is my dad This is his before This is his after and he even he's down. I think another size or two since then. So these are a couple months old Hey, Melissa. Hey Kimber um, This is my daughter when she first started out right here um, Now she these are only like a couple months old like this is two months two months into keto so, those are, um, and look, Facebook is so smart. It says, do you want to tag Catherine J. Campbell? Ah, that's too cute. It's so smart. And this is my mom. Yes, that was her before. And this is her after. And she looks amazing. My parents have not been bike riding in like 20 years. They've just bought a new set of bikes. So, yay, mom and dad. Um, what I wanted to do, the whole purpose of us gathering here together, is to educate you and help you succeed at keto. I'm going to give you lots and lots of resources. Um, I want to see some thumbs up if you guys went in and printed out the stuff that I had on the event. Let me see some thumbs up coming. This is going to be very interactive, guys. Very interactive. So... While those thumbs up are coming, I will say, if you guys want to get me on Instagram, it's Keto Gammy. On Twitter, it's hashtag Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. You guys can hit me up there. So if you haven't printed things out from the, um, the website, I do have a link. Oh, yes. I see some hearts. I see some thumbs up. Wonderful. If you haven't printed any out, I would um, strongly encourage you to go uh, to the event. There's a link on the event. You try, but no success. Wanda, what I did is I took that link and I emailed it to um, to a UPS shop in my little town. And they did it and printed it out just like that. And it was very reasonable. Now, I got mine all in nice color format and it's nice paper. Hey, Billy. And it's really, really super nice. So, I did that so that I could share with you guys. So, um, the first thing you want to do, if, uh, you, don't, if you don't have... Um, 
Oh, <laughs> if my, I was like, what is that knock? If you don't have uh, the ability to print it yourself, just run down to a print shop. This will be well worth your time and money to just print that out. That's the only thing that you're, the, the cost that you will have. The other thing that I strongly suggested, awesome one, is get yourself a notebook. I got a one inch and I like these kind of binders. And then I have little single sheet protectors. This is going to be your keto Bible. Okay, you can buy a lot of stuff online, but none of them are going to have your information that you know, want, and love. The other thing that I strongly suggest is get yourself a notebook. Use it as a journal. Use it as a place that you're going to go to and write things down. Take notes here. Take notes during the week. Write down questions that you're going to have that, you know, when you're not basically at your computer or whatever. Thanks for sharing that out, Billy. I appreciate that. I really want to um, help a ton of people doing this. I don't know if I'm going to do a second one. Hey, Christina, this is, and hey, Layla, Nina, Nini says, hey, this is um, a 12-week workshop, so in three months, you should make an enormous amount of progress. Now, that progress is going to depend on one major thing, and your success is directly relevant at how much you put into this workshop. So I assure you, if you put your all into this, you go, you get yourself a binder, you print it up, you're here every Tuesday night. I can clearly tell you guys that who is who are going to be my winners in this, okay? So there's about 21 of you here now. So that being, yay, that being said with the, uh, the, the 20-ish ones that are here now, um, only a small fraction of you guys will succeed and follow through. So this is really left up to you. This is completely free. doesn't cost you anything to attend. So I'm going to tell you the first thing that, um, that you need to do, you, uh, like I said, pen, paper, binder, notebook, printouts, sheet protectors, um, oh, I got binder twice. We only need that once. So your success is going to be directly related to your participation. The first thing you want to do is know how to take proper before and after pictures. These I found on the internet and they are really, really good. As you can see, there's no distracting background. They are focused. They are labeled when they are. Just really good before and after. So this is going to be a huge part of your progress and how you gauge where you're at. Now, the before and afters that I shared with you guys are not quite as good as I would like for them to be because I didn't have these instructions. These instructions are in your printout, and I strongly encourage you to take those and take them now. Do not wait to take your before and afters because they're no longer befores. They're laters. So, uh, hey, Deanna. So, um, I want to welcome all of you to our free 12 Weeks of Keto and this is a workshop, so you will be working. And one of the things that we're going to go over today is SMART goals. Give me some thumbs up, or actually give me some ones down there. Oh, absolutely, Brenda. Give me some ones below. Just type in a one below if you know what SMART goals are. If you've ever learned anything in corporate about SMART goals. Hey, Christine. So, um, I'm going to look for those ones to pop up. For those of you who don't know what SMART goals are, I'm going to explain it to you. And this little paper does that. So, each letter stands for something. The S is specific. So, we're going to set real specific goals. Nikki knows. And you don't say, um, I want more visitors. That's very random. You want to be very specific. So you don't want to just say, I want to lose weight. There you go. I'm seeing those goals pop. You guys know what SMART goals are. Hey, Lindell. Awesome. So you guys are real familiar. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to set a specific goal. Now let's talk about our, our journey into keto. So there's several goals. Now, there's goals that you're going to meet that you didn't even realize that you were going to meet. So let's just throw out a few for instances. Um, instead of saying, I want to lose weight, measurable. That's right. M is measurable. So instead of saying, I want to lose weight, you're going to say something like, I want to become healthier and get at, say, 150 pounds. You know, you want to be very specific. How do you want to be healthier? I want to lower my blood sugar. I want to lose 50 pounds. 
I want to get down to a size 10. You know, all these things are very, very specific. So if you have a goal in mind, you need to be able to visualize that. And so in order to do that, you need that to be very, very specific. So, and measurable. So we talked about, I want to get down to a certain size. I want to be able to ride a bike. I want to be able to get on an airplane without a seatbelt extender. You know, there's so many things, so many winning things that, that we as people who have had weight issues, um, I remember going to the fair and not wanting to get on the rides because I was scared. Number one, I wouldn't fit. Number two, I might get stuck. Oh my goodness. You know what I'm saying? Like, so those are some real life goals. If you really like the fair or you really want to go get on a roller coaster, hey, that's a great goal to have. So measurable. Make sure your goal is trackable. So you can say, yes, I met this first goal. And let's set goals small. So our first goal might be to lose 20 pounds or to lose one size. So whatever that is, you have to be able to measure it attainable. Attainable is very important. You don't really want to start keto. Hey, Juanita, you don't want to start keto and say, oh, I want to lose 100 pounds. Now, you may very well want to lose 100 pounds and need to lose 100 pounds. However, let's start with some small ones. Let's do 20 pounds at a time. Let's do one pant size. Did you know that a pant size is like 10-ish pounds? So, that's good information to know. So realistic, that brings me to the next thing. Let's be realistic. You're not going to be a size eight in three months. So what kind of goals can you set to achieve within the next three months? Within our 12 weeks together, what goals can you set? And they're measurable. You can meet them and they're realistic. We know my cheekbones, huh, son? <laughs> we know that... Um, you have to be honest with yourself and know what you're capable of. So don't say in three months, I'm going to lose 50 pounds. If you know, all right, I am, I'm straight up. Anybody a cheater, drop a two below if you've cheated on keto or any other diet. Drop a two. Hey, Bonnie, because I have cheated. So I know I am not going to lose 50 pounds in 12 weeks. However, I could lose 10, 12, 15, 20. So I'm going to be realistic about it. Now, and then that brings me to the last one, which is time bound. So we're going to make these goals just for this session. Although you may want to lose 100 pounds, you may want to lose 50 pounds, you may want to lose 40 pounds, whatever your goal is. There you go, Kimberly. See, Nikki, we've all cheated in the past. So we know we have to work within our limitations of being human beings, correct? Oh, see, I see a lot of you. Sorry, this is a delayed format here, but I, I, I can see lots of you have been where I am at. So I want you guys to drop below something that, uh, the reason that you're doing keto, and I want specific reasons, like I want to be able to, give me some goals, I want to be able to uh, not use a seatbelt extender, I want to be able to go into a dressing room, well not, I want to be able to just pick something off of a rack and take it home and not have to try it on, I want to be able to um, wear high heels, I want to be able to... Um, sit more comfortable in a restaurant outside in the world. You know, these are obtainable goals. And so we have to break them down into the, to the smaller portions. So this is your homework for this week. Let's get smart, measurable, attainable, relevant, time uh, sensitive um, goal set. And there's room for each spot right here. So what exactly do you want to do? How will you track your progress? Is it realistic for you? Do you have what you need to make it possible? Well, your first step of having what you need is being here. And I'm going to tell you lots of tools and lots of things that you need while we're here. Um, why am I doing this? Does it matter to me? Is it important enough to you? Do you want it enough? Do you want it enough? Yes, I want to be able to just, I'm trying to get off a lot. Yes, my mom came off of all of her medicine. Wanda, size 10 is wonderful. That's where I'm headed as well. Um, you have to make it matter. Is this important enough to you? What are you willing to do? I want to go in the Mrs. section too, Rhonda. I hear you, girl. All right, so when will I have this completed? That's pretty easy. We're setting our goals for 12 weeks from now. So this is week one of our session, and we will have 11 more. I want to be under 200 and take my son this summer 
to the in air obstacle course rope climbing and zip lining. Yes, I want to look and feel better. Amazing, amazing. Now, Sabrina, let's make that more specific. What size is going to make you look and feel better? Can you look and feel better 10 pounds lighter, 20 pounds lighter? Kimber, wear a bra that is not side boobies pouring over. Oh, I love these. You guys are awesome. Awesome. And see, those are the things that are going to motivate you. Those are the things you want to jot down. So you want to have notes. Take notes this whole time. And you can be able to go back and look at those notes. So the next page that I have, and I hope you guys saw on the front that I had printed this out. And it's a list of all the things that we're going to try and get through. And whatever we don't get through, of course, we will get through on the next session. Um, yes, you want to stop further damage to the kidneys and hearts. All right, so let's talk about the Keto Dictionary. This is a nice little handy guide that I found online. Um, talks about different things. So, W-O-E, way of eating. W-I, weigh in. Are you guys weighing every day? There you go, Bonnie. There you go. Are you guys weighing every single day? Stop the madness because we're looking at fat loss, not weight loss. Because you don't want to lose your muscle mass. And you can lose fat without losing your muscle mass. Being more confident in a bathing suit. That is awesome. Hey, Carolyn, welcome. All right, so intermittent fasting is IF. Oh, mad. Only one meal a day. Now, a lot of people use that. I'm not one of them, but a lot of people do. Yes, Brenda, just getting out of bed without struggling, right? And moving freely. How about crossing your legs, girls? How about that? That's right. All right. Fat flush, FF, sugar-free, SF, LC, low-carb, HWC, heavy whipping cream. So BPC, bulletproof coffee. So all of these things right here, you want to be familiar with what those are because we will be using those on and on. Paint your toenails and breathe at the same time. Amen, sister. I hear you. All right, so let's talk about one of the greatest things that you can do. Sorry, guys, i got to scooch up in here a little bit. I'm sliding down. One of the greatest things that you guys can do um, for your own health, the best thing, and that is drink water. Drink water, drink water, drink water. So you're going to have a better fat metabolism. You'll have decreased cravings. It flushes all the toxins from your body. You have healthier skin and complexion and more. Now, do you guys like my complexion? Drop me a three below if you think my complexion is pretty good. So, that would be water, and yes, for those of you who don't know, I do drink ketones as well, and I take collagen and MCT oil. All of those help me to look like this, rather than, let's get that little picture out again, let's see. <coughs> I hid pictures for myself. Um, it is a amazing, thank you Wanda, thank you, thank you, thank you. It is amazing if you guys would look just at the difference in my face. I mean, that is just awesome. Tie your shoes, Kimberly. I hear you. So you guys will have this too. I know some of you do do the ketones. Add the water, add the water, add the water. Thank you, guys. So let's talk about your keto food pyramid. Now, I went out and I printed several of these off. And some of them are going to have some information that we're going to cross off. And some are going to have some good information. So, let's look at this one. And we're just going to look at this together. So, it says nuts and seeds, berries, some non-green vegetables, green vegetables, eggs and dairy, oils and meat. Well, that's pretty good. Okay? But it's very broad. So, I'm going to break this down for you. It also says to exclude bread, pasta, sugar, milk, corn, beans, and rice. So those are pretty simple. This is a nice little easy reminder to say, hey, you know, these are the things we want and these are the things that we don't. So would you guys agree? Pretty simple, right? So we need more specifics. So what I did is we're going to do the green list first. Let's look at the green list, okay? Now the very first paragraph in the green list, let's read it. It says, green is an all-you-can-eat list. You choose Anything you like without worrying about a carbohydrate content as all the foods will be between 0 to 5 to 100 grams. Okay. Now, we're going to stop right here. And this is the first keto tragedy. I don't care what you're on. You do not need, hey Lenny, you do not need to be out there eating all you can eat. 
Okay. Now here, doing a reboot. Mm -hmm. Awesome, Regina. And this is a place for you. I'll absolutely tell you how to, how to keep on track after a reboot. I'm doing a reboot, too, so there you go. So, all you can eat is a no, 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 no. You really don't want to do that. But if you're eating the right foods, you're not going to eat hung. You're not going to have a hunger. Now, I will tell some of you who probably experience what I do. I want you to drop a four below if you're an emotional eater. Give me a four for all you emotional eaters out there. And that's something that we have to work on. I believe that that's probably why I have lost the weight a little bit slower than some others. I'm very consistent in my weight loss, but I'm a little bit slower. I am very proud of the fact I did not gain any weight over the holidays. So, I mean, I did gain the loss game, but I, I ended up on the even keel. So, there you go. I'm seeing a lot of your emotional eaters. So, for you emotional eaters, what we're going to do is I want you to promise yourself before you go and grab any of this green list, you are going to drink yourself some water. Okay, because remember what we said about water, right? Water's gonna do what? What do y'all? What do we say water's gonna do for us besides great skin? It's gonna give us a better fat metabolism. It's gonna decrease our cravings. Okay, those are important. Those are super important. So I'm gonna keep that water thing on the side over here. So that's really really important. So I see a lot of you are just like me. You're emotional eaters. So let's go to that water first because that water is truly going to help us to get through. Now, if you have done a fast before or a reboot, drop a five below. Okay, I'm in the middle of what they call a reboot, which is a 60 hour fast, which I'm going to continue mine because I'm doing mine for spiritual reasons and in addition to health reasons, nutritional ones. So when you do a fast, um, you deprive yourself of food and so then when you start getting those hunger pains you're 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 having to figure out little tools well one of the tools is water so there you go bonnie's done a fast before billy absolutely fast are very very high, highly highly recommended um i feel like the fast i do every month gets my body right back into the state that it needs to be good job regina first one is the best way to start keto um, if you want more information on a reboot or anything like that, I do have products and I'm going to put this out here right now. I do, I do have products that I carry that are available, that are tools that I will be talking about throughout this. Any keto police, you know, I've got my disclaimers listed on there. I am not a medical professional. I am sharing information about what works for me and I hope it'll work for you. So anytime you're interested in any more details on anything, please send me a message. That is the fastest way to get to me. If we're not friends, go ahead and click on my face right now and let's become friends. So, although this is not an inclusive all-you-can-eat list, this is a generous amount. So, yeah, Regina, send me, uh, you, you're on Reboot, so you probably can, can hit up whoever got you on Reboot, and they definitely can get you some more stuff on that. Um, so, it, 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 they go on to say it's almost impossible to overdo your carbohydrate in, intake by sticking to this group of foods. Overing protein is not recommended. If you stick to these foods and you eat all you can eat, you surely will have some issues. Okay, I can tell you that right now. Now, you can eat a generous amount. I will let you know that in order to lose weight, it is a scientific fact that you have to have a calorie deficit. So, if you're normally eating 3,000 calories a day, which I firmly believe I wasn't tracking when I was eating like a crazy person and emotionally eating all over the place but I assure you that Oreos and Big Macs and all that have a relatively high caloric content so um yeah Carolyn uh get in my inbox uh these are a lot of comments and I've got an hour's worth of time with you guys so um in order to get information to me quickly if you want me to respond quickly please get my inbox um so this list, yes, you can have a generous amount, but what I recommend, that the first thing that you do is you download um, an app. My daughter uses Carb Manager, or used it. We're lazy keto, so we don't do a lot of tracking. If you're strict keto, this is probably not the place for you. You probably know more information than me at this point, and you could probably teach this, this workshop yourself. Um, if you are lazy keto, dirty keto, what that means is that you don't really count. Well, lazy and dirty keto, usually this, how we start is we start, this is how I started. I started with an app and I thought, whoo, I'm tracking, I'm strict keto. No, 
Just because you track does not make you strict keto. So what you want to do um, is you want to get the app just to get an idea of what your macro should look like. Now, I use an app called LifeSum. There is a subscription fee for it. They have a free one, but the, the things that I use on it, I track my measurements. You can use it to track your water intake. You can use it to track how much seafood you do a week. Um, track your calories, your all your macros it sets up, and it will set up as strict keto. So I, I kind of, I like it, but I think it's whatever you're used to, you'll like. Um, the thing I do like about Carb Manager is that it shows you a pie graph, and it shows you what percentages of what that you're eating. So keto is um, a high-fat, moderate-protein, low-carb. So you want um, to break those, those down, which we'll get into all of that detail. So on the green list... Um, now, okay, so you're reading this paragraph. So most of you probably stopped with all you can eat on this on this reading. But I'm going to teach you one thing in this workshop. And that one thing is read. Read, 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 read. The more you read, the better off you are. Reading labels, reading stuff like this. Because if you're just saying that first part and then you're scanning through this list and you're going shopping, you might get yourself in a little trouble. So it says caution. Even though these are all you can eat foods, only eat when you're hungry, stop when you're full, and do not overeat. The size and thickness of your palm without fingers is a good measure for a serving of animal protein. Okay, so yeah, this sounds a lot like all the kind of previous stuff that I learned. The good thing about this list is the foods on here. So let's look at those. They're not all you can eat, but they're all relatively low carb. So you've got eggs, meat, poultry, game, cured meats. Um, now, if some keto... Um, Strict keto people don't do a lot of this because they're doing a lot of them are doing it for medical reasons, cancer, things like that. Your dairy, some people are sensitive to dairy, and I'll let you know that right up front. I'm not sensitive to dairy, but I have to make myself not eat fried cheese because I like fried cheese and I try I want to eat it like every day. I love fried cheese, it's very satisfying to me. Um, but I know that that is my issue and I have to be careful with them. I, what I do with my eggs, I boil eggs, keep them in the fridge, keep them handy, make chicken salad once a week, keep that handy, have lettuce in there. Um, you can have some heavy whipping cream, soft cheeses. Um, I have a list, uh, a list that you can copy and paste onto your phone, put it in your notes on your phone and you can use it to go shopping. It's in the notes in the, in the workshop. Fats, the fats that you want, um, like bacon grease is really good, really good to save, and you can fry things in it because it's all natural. It's the fat, animal fat. Avocado oil, that is my favorite. That is my go-to. You can use it at very high temperatures. I have fried shrimp, keto style. I have fried steak, keto style. I have fried chicken, fried pork chops. I have all of those goodies, but I just do them keto style. Avocado oil is the one that I use. You'll definitely want to get um, one or two big bottles of that. Um, butter. Now, when I say butter, I don't mean margarine. I mean real butter, real butter. Now, um, there's all kinds of butters out there, but you can just get the Walmart shelf butter. But no matter what you go out there and you get, still read the label. There are some sneaky stuff in labels. Um, ghee, I've heard a lot of people say, yeah, ghee is better, but I don't like the taste of it. So, coconut oil, I don't like. Uh, some of them are unflavored, and that's all, all good and well and fine. But to me... Because, uh, like olive oil, once it gets to a certain temperature, it's not really good. Oh, thank you, Regina. I appreciate it. So, it's okay. You won't miss a lesson. All you do is come on and get my get the replay. So, um, that's absolutely fine. If you're watching this on the replay, give me a hashtag replay. I know everyone that I'm looking at right now is live. You can put live if you want to. Um, I'm so glad you guys showed up. You're in the top 10%. I'll let you know that. It was over 250 people said they were coming or interested. There's 20 of you that are really committed to doing this. And I am here for all 20 of you guys. So, I'm going to bump out some uh, invites of... Um, some people who didn't respond and so we can get some more people in here and get it going on and get more people changed. Um, let's see. These other ones, I don't know. I don't use lard or macadamia oil. Um, mayonnaise, I love mayonnaise and I use the full fat. Um, olive oil, I use a little bit in salads and stuff like that. Oh, thank y'all for the love. That's so sweet. Um, flavorings and condiments. Um, 
you have to look and make sure it doesn't contain sugar. So like I have a no sugar added ketchup that is amazing. And it's like one gram of carbohydrate. Barbecue sauces, I think there's a sugar-free one out there. I'm not much of a barbecue fan. But those are the kinds of things that you want to look for. You want to look at the label. See what the label says. Um, sweeteners, and we'll talk about those too in this course. Erythritol granules, stevia powder, xylitol granules. Now, I will tell you a little something about some stevia that I found in my journeys. And this is really interesting. So, let me grab this out. We're going to talk about lots of different kinds of sugars, but I'm just going to give you this. Um, Miracle Whip, you need to check the carbs on that. I'm not sure. Yes, being able to take a picture with a grandchild not being ashamed. I got you. So, how many of you have seen the No Stevia Great Value out there? Sounds good, right? Alright, so I'm going to show you guys something here that is really going to shock you. So stevia has become very, very popular and um, lots and lots of people are using it. And it took me six months. I just discovered this. So six months of being on keto, I have now discovered something that I will never forget. Um, you guys see that? That says two grams of carbohydrates for one little sachet. Did you know that? So I didn't, so I'm here to tell you that you need to really beware of everything, even if it's stevia. So um, in your handouts, um, you will see uh, some stuff on some sweeteners, and I will get to that. But I wanted to let you know, carbs are hidden everywhere. It's like a jungle out there, ladies and gentlemen. This is one thing I wholeheartedly agree with. A pound of this a day, okay? Yes, all of these, eat them up. All green leafy vegetables. Get yourself some kale, some spinach. Spinach is super great. Spinach, lettuce, keep those on hand. You can make scrambled eggs with spinach in it. It's super good. I take uh, some, I think it's called Boston lettuce. The leaves are the size of both of my hands. And they're really um, crispy and, and tender. And you take it, put chicken salad in it, roll it up. It is super good. Um, let's see. Vegetables grown above the ground except butternut. Artichoke hearts. Be a little careful. Asparagus, super, super good. I don't know what aubergines even are. <laughs> Avocados are great. Okay, so everyone said, oh. I don't understand why I'm supposed to eat avocados. I'm trying to say less than 20 grams, and avocados are like blah, 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 grams of carbohydrates. Yes, they are, but they have fiber in them. I'm going to teach you. That was my biggest confusion. I was like, I'm so conflicted. Why am Why am I going to eat avocado, first of all? Um, because it's good fat. It's good for you. And I hate the taste of, of avocados. Yeah. So does everyone else. Um, no, there are a few people that actually do like to throw a little salt on them and eat them. I'm not one of them yuck so i sneak them in i put them in my chicken salad i put them in toss salad put them in guacamole i put them in deviled eggs avocado is the easiest food to hide in there it's a very satisfying good fat so instead of eating a ton of fat bombs eat some more avocado um Broccoli, Brussels sprouts, sprouts, cabbage, cauliflower, celery. Celery is a go-to, and cucumbers are a go-to. Chop them up, put them in a small mason jar, keep them in your fridge. They're go-to foods. Um, leeks, mushrooms, a little bit of mushrooms, olives, black olives, green olives. I keep those in my fridge. Another good fat that's a good go-to. Onions, peppers, pumpkin, radishes. Radishes are a good substitute for potatoes if you have like a roast. Um, sauerkraut, spring onions, tomatoes. Did you know, and I bet you don't know this, did you know that purple, red, purple, whatever you want to call them, onions have more carbohydrates in them than the plain ones do, yellow or white? Yep. You really got to look sometimes. You just have to look. So now that takes us to our orange list, a fat bomb. I'm going to tell you what a fat bomb is. I'm going to take you to the orange list. And this course is 12 weeks long, so you're going to learn things as you go. You'll get some recipes. You'll get some information. There's lots and lots to learn. 
So, our orange list is, it says orange is made up of ingredients containing between 6 grams and 25 grams of carbs. So, did you hear that? 25 grams. So, how many carbs are we trying to stay under a day? 20-25. So, you could eat one serving of some of this stuff and really blow the whole thing. The orange list is something you need to be very careful of. Unless you're on your maintenance area of your keto, I would really stay away from this list. Um, honey is definitely not something on this list that we want to do. So let's go ahead and, and, and squash that. Let's take the honey out because you don't want honey. Um, carrots and sweet potatoes, let's go ahead and cross those right on out too because those are later on down the line. This orange list is for when you are maintaining your weight. This is not trying to lose weight on keto because if you're eating this orange list you're going to put yourself in trouble um butternut squash definitely no cashews chestnuts no nope. you want to stay away from watermelon the only thing is occasionally maybe make yourself a little treat with blueberries or strawberries apples and bananas definitely not so let's just take this orange list for right now and let's just do that let's say no to the orange list so, shame on the people that didn't come that thought that they could print all these up and have lots of resources that they could just throw out there because this is a no-no. This is, is something you do not want to do on keto. All right, now there's a lot of information in here, I know, but stay with me and I'm going to take you through it all. That's why we're making the notebooks. We can go back, take notes. This is a an educational class in which I hope you learn lots and lots of stuff. This is what's going to help you succeed. So let's talk about the red list now. The red list is our next one. And it says red will contain all the foods to avoid as they will either be toxic, seed, oils, soya, or high carbohydrate foods. Potato, potatoes and rice. Now, didn't they just say on the last page that uh, sweet potatoes were okay? Come on, guys. We need to get real. So you'll find a lot of inconsistencies like that in a lot of stuff out there. It is your job as your number one optimum self-care provider to take care of what you need to take care of for yourself. You are your own best consultant. All right, so this means we're going to take all of our stuff. Now, the best thing I can suggest for you to do is go ahead and clean that kitchen out and clean your Facebook up unsubscribed any of these yummy yummy dessert high carb things all these pages i unsubscribed to all of them because i couldn't stand it these friends out there that you have that want to remain to be chunky friends good for them they want to put all these recipes on there they're non-keto you need to unfollow them you might love them don't unfriend them but unfollow them so these are things that you need to clean out the good and in I mean, clean out the bad and end with the good. So, we're going to chunk flour. But guess what we're going to do? We're going to use coconut flour and almond flour instead. You're going to find lots of substitutes. Um, <clears throat> all forms of bread. Now, they say all forms. Keto bread is bomb. I am on the hunt for the best keto bread. I think I am on the cusp of it. So, I'm so very excited. There are... Now, this is not for strict keto. Strict keto people, like, don't believe in anything that has wheat in it and blah, blah, blah. There are breads that I've ordered I, I love, 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 and the, the name brand is Zero Carb. They're Zero Carb um, bagels. They're super good. You might want to wait till you're fat adapted, and I'll explain what that is next week probably. But um, you only want to eat keto. Now, just because it says keto, too, doesn't mean it is keto. If it says low carb. Well, how low carb is it? If it's, you know, three or less, I might would do it if it comes to bread. Because bread is my weakness. Give me a five if bread is your ninja. I love bread. Bread is just my jam. I love bread. I will take those zero carb bagels and I will put me some cream cheese on it. And a little bit of strawberry. And I'm okay with losing five pounds a month. Because I'm not going to totally deprive myself. But I'm going to stay within the limits. Alright, so uh, couscous brands, cereal cakes, all this stuff. I'm not even going to go over it. Read this red list and just don't do it. Beer, um, sodas, Diet Coke. Um, there you go. I'm, I'm right there with you. Um, yeah, this is uh, fat-free stuff. Uh, yeah, just get rid of all this. Uh, it says all seed oils, which is not true because avocado is, is, I guess, a seed. I don't know. 
Let's see. No fruit juice, no vegetable juice. All fast food. Okay, first of all, I am still I have a I have a live video on my page all about eating out. And I'm gonna tag that video in this group at some point. But that video covers everything you can go and eat out. I can go and eat out anywhere and go to keto. Um, it says all processed food. Well, I'm sorry, I'm I'm still gonna eat my shredded lettuce, so I'm not the keto police. Any food with added sugar, um, yeah, I I'm I'm not as strict on that. Um, it says don't eat Vienna sausages. I have eaten Vienna sausages. It's like four grams. No diet Pepsi. Those are not, those are just bad for you. Um, I use what's called Zevia, Z-E-V-I-A, and it is a grit, no Coke Zero. It is, it is really, I mean, now there, there's people that lose weight on keto doing that. There absolutely are. But those sweeteners, they have an effect on your blood glucose levels, and that can hinder you and slow you. And it has aspartame and things like that in it, which are like carcinogens, and they're just not good for you. So what I recommend is go to Food Lion. If you're local, Carolyn, I know you're local. Food Lion, and they have, they have, nope, no Diet Mountain Dew. Look in your grocer or look at Amazon, and it's called Zevia, Z-E-V-I-A. They have Dr. Pepper, Mountain Dew, um, cream soda, Black cherry, ginger ale, ginger ale, and the soda one are my favorites. They're absolutely clear. They're made with stevia leaves, zero carbs, zero calories. They're fizzy. I love them. I try not to drink any Diet Coke. Not that I don't ever Diet Coke. I was hugely addicted to it. And I think that's part of it is uh, breaking those addictions. So you might want to stay away from that. Don't use anything agave or whatever they call it. Um, artificial sweeteners like aspartame. Uh, saccharin, sucralose. They say not Splenda, but I use some Splenda here and there too, so I don't know. Um, cordials, dried fruit, fructose. Um, and right here, they contradict yourself. It says honey, except for on the orange list. Okay, so yeah, I'm not eating honey either. Um, no sugar, no sweets. Now, you can make fat bombs that are replacements of your sweets, and those are really good. Um, I have a super go-to. Kimber, you asked me what a fat bomb was. That recipe that I sent you was considered a fat bomb. So I will take cream, a pack of cream cheese, a stick of butter, soften it up, whip it up with my mixer, add two tablespoons of vanilla flavoring, a half a cup of sweetener, like xylitol or whatever, pyre, and I will add that in there, zip it up, Put it in a dish, and I've got some instant cheesecake, and it is super good. So you can eat like a fourth of that. All right, so foods to eat. So here we are on this list, and this shows you your percentages, okay? 5 to 10% carbs. Actually, you want to keep that 5%. Uh, 15 to 25% protein and 65 to 80% fat. Now, I print this out because some people, um, some people are eating a little bit more fat than what you need to. So don't think that fats are endless amounts of things that you can eat. That's why you want the app. That's why you want to track that stuff. So um, why don't y'all y'all drop below how long you've been doing keto. I want to see um, some numbers, whether it's weeks, months, how long have you been doing keto? Because I've been in about six months, and this is something I don't have to deal with, but we're going to talk about some symptoms and stuff that happen. While y'all are dropping those, I am going to tell you I bought some of these. These are ketone strips. I bought them off of Amazon. A lot of people don't use them. A lot of people do. I want to know when I'm ketosis. When you first start out, your body is running off of glucose. Two days, one week. Okay, so you guys are new. All right. Three weeks. Good job, Mary. Gosh, has it been three weeks already? I'm so proud of you. Jennifer, three weeks. That's awesome. So you guys are just coming in. And even the ones that have been in there a few weeks. These are, this is the bottle that it comes in, okay? This is a brand new bottle, so I'm not touching my face and had this in the bathroom. So what you do is it has these little strips in there. And you can see, let me see if you guys can see that little tip right there. You want to um, use that. Okay, you guys haven't started yet. That's good. Five months, that's great. Um, so you will literally pee on the strip. Okay, and then you will see what color it turns, all right? The darker is not the better. You want to just be here. As long as you're not here, any of these that show you're in ketosis are good, okay? Now, 
It doesn't matter if it's darker. Darker is not better in this instance. What darker sometimes mean is you're not drinking enough water. So these are good indicator of who I need to I need to up my water because the ketones are building up in your system. Um, now I personally wanted a kickstart and I drink exogenous ketones. Y'all can see them behind me. I've got them hanging up. I do sell them. They put your body in ketosis within an hour. So I like them. I use them. They're not for everyone. They're not for keto police. They're not for uh, strict ketoers. They're they're more whole foods and by the Bible. I am not. I am a. Uh, I love the energy it gives me. I've, I've used that to replace my Diet Cokes, to replace um, any kind of energy drinks. So it just makes me feel really good. So I absolutely love, love, love them. And they work for me. And they're really good, especially for starting keto. Your first week of keto. So those of you who are just starting out, you may start experiencing some symptoms. This is the page you want to read. All right, this is all about keto flu, keto flu symptoms. Um, what time of day should you do? You can test any time of day, any time. Um, and until you get into ketosis, you're going to experience a lot of struggle. Okay, and sometimes it's really hard to get into ketosis. That's why I use the ketones initially. And so initially when you use them, they get your body in ketosis, and then it gets you to where your body will naturally stay in ketosis. It's really easy to kick your body out of ketosis, and it can take you a couple days just to get back in. If you cheat, which I do, and when I cheat, I still drink those, and they help me out. So I love, love, love it. Um, symptoms of keto flu, fatigue, sugar cravings, dizziness, nausea, irritability, insomnia, brain fog, constipation, drowsiness, cramping, confusion, muscle soreness, headaches, diarrhea, stomach irritability, difficult fo difficulty focusing, feeling weak or shaky, um, fatigued, absolutely, absolutely. So these are some things right here. Solutions for keto flu, eat more fats, more good fats. If you need a fast fat when you have the keto flu, use that little quick recipe. Um, move even when you're tired. I had a real hard time with that one. I was like, whoo, no. Because uh, my first month I did keto, I used no supplements whatsoever. And I really, like, oh, super struggled. It was terrible. Um, add in more electrolytes, which learning what electrolytes are are very important. Drink more water. Avoid sugar. Avoid sugar-free items. Eat more calories. Make a sleep make sleep a priority eat a few more clean carbs okay so it goes on with lots of detail i'm going to tell you if you want to avoid keto flu it's really simple all right so go to your local walmart they really got a huge little deal going on um but i would say actually you know you can go to the dollar tree for this stuff it's not that big of a deal there's two things that you want to have in your possession you want to have potassium do not get the 99 milligram potassium. This one's 550 milligrams. This is the one you want. You want to have enough potassium that you can maintain. This is what helps you in your electrolytes. And also, I get the calcium magnesium zinc mix, but magnesium's fine. You want to get like the 350 to 300, 300 to 350 grams, milligrams of magnesium. You take those two, you buy yourself a big thing, a pink Himalayan salt. Pink Himalayan salt, all right? So it's a special salt that has lots of minerals in it. It's a natural salt. So go ahead and throw out your table salt that you've been using. Um, you don't need all that mess. You want to use that, and you want to salt everything. So your sodium intake should be way higher than what you're at. So those are the things that you need to make sure you do. Um, now, this is another rundown list. And I told you all about this stuff. This is another list that it's going to have things on there that I absolutely do eat. Um, let's see. Let's talk about, it says no, never alcohol. Well, some people want uh, some wine, and that's okay. Um, but not a lot of it. I don't drink, so that's not an issue for me. Starches, yeah, you don't want to eat any of those. Um, let's see. Lunch meats. Now, see, I eat lunch meats. I eat processed meats. So, um, I think that's okay. So, lists like this, um, you really need to kind of be careful with. I will send you, um, I mean, on, on the, the event, there is an entire list, one post that lists all those foods. Copy and paste it. Message yourself with it. Whatever. Have it on your phone. Use it as your shopping list. It's absolutely a wonderful resource. So, this one talks about good fat and bad fat. 
Okay, so we don't want to have canola oil, soybean oil, sunflower oil, corn oil, um, soft, safflower oil, none of these oils. We don't want to have peanut oil. None of those oils are, are really good for you. All right, but these are the oils that are really good for you. All right, good fat, butter. I don't know what tallow is. If y'all know what tallow is, please fill me in. I have no idea. Ghee, don't like it. Palm oil, mm, not going to try it because I've tried the heart of palm um, pasta, not a big fan. Coconut oil, if it's unflavored, I'll do it. Um, avocado oil, my fave. Olive oil, I use on salads and things like that. Fish oil, um, now let's talk about fish oil. I use um, krill oil, and it's got the omegas and all that in it. This is the best one to get. My dad told me about this one. It's 1,250 milligrams. It's a little pricey, but you can get it on um, Amazon. It's called... Prime Red Krill Oil with Omega-3 Complex and blah, blah, blah. Good for you. And eggs. All right. So all these are excellent, good, good, good stuff. Are you guys getting some value from this? I hope you are. I worked so hard to put this together. Give me a six if you guys are digging this. Um, is keto friendly? So we have two sides of this list right here. And so these list after list after list can be confusing, right? There's so many resources out there like that. Just what you need to do is we're going to take those lists and we're going to turn them over. We're going to see that those lists are there, great and well and fine. I'm going to flip on over before we go any further because I think this is the best place for it. There you go. Thank you, guys. Go through your paperwork and let's flip down to, oh, we're running out of time. Let's cover this label stuff first. So let's flip down to labels because this covers a lot. No, I really don't. I don't burp with it, Jen. Not at all. Um, so let's cover this label right here. So let's dig down to your labels. Oh, I'm so glad y'all are enjoying this. All right, so reading a label. So this nutritional fact, the first one that I'm going to show you, it is a sugar-free candy bar. So um, some places say you count half of the sugar alcohol. Now, when you're talking about this kind of of large amount. This is a sugar-free candy bar. This has 29 grams of fat and 18 grams of uh, sugar alcohol. So this is one of those that I say you probably should not be using this product. Okay, honestly, because it's saying, okay, half of the carbohydrates and the sugar alcohol. All right, so now you're at 20 grams of carbohydrates for a sugar-free candy bar. This is a bad, bad choice. Let's just go ahead and say, I'm not going to do it. All right? So those Atkins bars and all those sugar-free things that are sitting out there, just don't do it. Just don't do it. Those are traps that will keep you from getting your body in ketosis. The whole trick that this is getting your body in ketosis so that it will burn your fat. And then you don't want to eat so many fat bombs, it's got to burn those first. And alcohol, it also has to burn that first. So just so you know, all those things have to be taken care of beforehand. Now, let's talk about, when we talk about a label, the other one, it tells the total carbohydrates, that's how many grams of carbohydrates is in one serving. And then you'll see dietary fiber. You guys see that? Dietary fiber is five grams. All right, now... Sugars is three, so usually someone who's already seen this that's um, strict keto would say, oh, let me look at the ingredients, and I'm totally not going to do this. However, I'm not one of those people. But when I look at 10 grams of carbohydrates and I see 5 grams of dietary fiber, um, yeah, I thought, Kimber, that was like bad, bad, bad. I would not buy the Slim Fast junk at Walmart at all, ever, 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 because it is not worth my carbohydrates, which I, I, is, is exactly what I'm about to say about this. This is Whatever this item is, it's going to cost me five grams of carbohydrates. I'm not going to eat anything that's going to cost me more than two or three grams of carbohydrates, especially in the beginning, because that is going to mess you up. All right, so you figure if you have a cup of coffee... And you have all these other things, uh, you know, so that's some heavy whipping cream. Oh, I just dropped something. So you really want to be a little stricter about what you're doing. Um, so read your labels. Read, 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 read your labels. That is the biggest takeaway. So this week, everywhere you go, look in your kitchen, clean your kitchen out. If you have a non-keto person in your, in your household, what you want to do is get them a cabinet, 
Sorry, guys. My nose is just terribly itching. Get your non-keto people a space or you get a space. Either way. And, and make that your space. You have to get your stuff separate. So you don't want to be tempted with all the stuff. Now, if you have to cook a non-keto meal like I do for my, my son, he's 18. And so he wants breakfast. Sometimes I'll make bacon and eggs for me, which is perfectly wonderful. And then I'll add a little packet of instant grits that I'll make up for him. And he's very satisfied with that piece of um, toast. So I'm glad you mentioned the coffee with cream, Jennifer. So I noticed Jennifer spelt it with a K, which means that she must... She must have experience with one of these little creams up here, like I've got, which are super good. Um, and they're good for you. So if you want a good cream, that's great. So let me tell you my story with Bulletproof Coffee. Drop me a, what number are we on? Six, I think, right? Or no, seven. Drop me a seven if you have heard of Bulletproof Coffee. I'm going to wait on those sevens. Let's see how many sevens we have from Bulletproof Coffee. Let me tell you a little bit of something about Bulletproof Coffee. So when I started out, first thing I loved was the Bulletproof Coffee. It was so amazing. So I made my little cup and I'm like, really? You want me to put butter in it? Oh boy, let's put some butter in my coffee. Oh my. Yes, y'all have heard of Bulletproof Coffee, right? So... Let me tell you, so I put, had one cup of coffee. Now, coffee has zero grams of carbohydrates. Yay, right? Okay, so let's start. We're at zero. We pour that bad boy in a cup, and we're at zero grams. We're doing so good. All right, so then we're going to add ourselves. Um, let's see, where'd that little piece of paper go? We're going to add ourselves a little packet of this. Of this stevia right here, right? Ooh, let's get some sweetener in there. Maybe two packs. Guess what? One cup of coffee. Two packs. You're already up. Let me write this down. So one cup. Carbs. Those two packs. So you have two grams. Two to four grams already. All right? Oh, that's right, Jennifer. You got some for me last week. Two to four grams of carbohydrates. Just in the, we're just at the sweetener. We haven't went any further, guys. That's it. All right. The next thing we're going to throw in there is some heavy whipping cream, right? Throw some heavy whipping cream in there. And then maybe someone told us we need to also take a tablespoon of coconut oil, right? So we've got a tablespoon of butter, a tablespoon of coconut oil, a tablespoon. And girls, I'm here to tell you, I was using more than a tablespoon of heavy whipping cream. Drop me an eight if you're heavy on the heavy whipping cream. Because I know I, sure enough, was heavy, heavy, heavy on that thing. So, I got my cup of coffee. So, I took and I calculated this out. You know, here I am six months later. And I remember doing that at first before I switched to my other keto, the, a good cream. that's keto friendly for real. So, I did it all out. In one cup of coffee, you have 30 grams of fat. Just with that little recipe I just gave you. Two cups... You're at 60 grams of fat. That's half your fat you probably need for the day, if not more. So, no wonder I didn't lose any weight my first month. Right, Mary? You like that cream just like I do. You'll love that keto cream. If you want some, hit me up. Um, so, the calories after putting that in was 271 calories per cup. The carbs, so now we've, we've just learned, now I calculated this up before I even learned about that stevia, and I was putting that in there, so I was at uh, at least two and a half grams of carbs for one cup, and so for two cups, I'm having five grams of carbs. So I've got five grams of carbs, I've got 60 grams of fat, and I was drinking two cups a day, and my calories were 542 calories. Now, let's just talk real here. Do y'all think me drinking two cups of coffee, right, Melissa? <laughs> two cups of coffee a day, my keto bulletproof coffee, the only thing that it was proofing was the fact that I was not going to lose no weight. So I'm going to tell you that's the first surprise that I want to fill you in on right now. And... Like I said, I have pumpkin spice and I have regular that are good, good, good. And they're like 120 calories. I got four, 
three different kinds of MCT oil in them, four different kinds of collagen in them, and butter ain't giving me that. I'm sorry. <laughs> the MCT oil is not giving you that. So, girls and guys, let's get off of that bulletproof coffee train and get some real coffee. Okay, something I can really drink. Mary, <laughs> you feel me? Like, she knows that keto cream is, like, perfect good. It's super creamy. Like, you just, I use the self-stirring mug, okay? I love that thing from Amazon. Because the cream has collagen in it, it takes a little bit to kind of break it up, right? So, when I first tried it, I thought, this stuff is awful. Because here I am, I'm used to butter and heavy whipping cream, right? Bonnie loves the cream, too. So, I'm like, um, I, this is chunky. What am I going to do with this? And I couldn't get it to mix up. So, I went on Amazon. I bought me one of them self-stirring mugs. And it goes, and it just stirs it all up in there. I got no worries in the world. I use it every day. <laughs> so, lesson that you can take away from on this live is, number one, no bulletproof coffee. Y'all need some good coffee with some good stuff in it, like MCT oil and collagen, and make your skin look juicy, juicy, good like mine. Hit me up for some cream. I will hook a girl up. I'll hook a guy up. I will get you guys straight. So, let's talk about your sweeteners. This little page right here. So, this little page. Oh, do we have time? Oh, we're running out of time. So, we may have to save the rest of these for next week. I am going to cover one more thing real, real quick. How many of you guys drop me an eight below if y'all like meal plans? If y'all want meal plans, yay, drop me an eight below. Drop me an eight below if you guys want meal plans. I need to see some eights. Who wants meal plans? Y'all know this is a trick question, right? <laughs> you can still use a little half and half. Live a little bit on the edge, Teresa. All right, so I see some eights. Y'all want meal plans, right? Y'all know this is a trick question. I know you do, right? <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to read y'all some of these meals. I printed two of them off. If y'all want them, they're in your book. All right, they're, they're in there. All right, so um, let, let's read this and see if, 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 um, all right, so I'm going to start on this one. This is Saturday. One ounce of Satori cheese. First of all, what the heck is Satori cheese? I don't know what Satori cheese is. Um, let's see. Oh, what else they got on here? Now, this one's actually kind of reasonable. I don't know why we would need apple cider vinegar. That just, that just, yep, that just makes my stomach go, ooh. Um, so, every day, this one is basically some meat and some lettuce. Um, boar's head roast beef. I don't know why it's boar's head. <laughs> Here to tell you, any roast beef will work. Um, I don't understand a lot of this. They done said boiled eggs on here like eight times. Y'all, y'all, y'all really just think you want this. I am not eating this. I'm not eating, I am not eating this. I'm, it's not happening. I like, I like to get on the fly. I like to do, I do a little bit of planning. I'm going to eat some boiled eggs, fried eggs, scrambled eggs, but I'm going to mix it up. So, let's take, this one says scrambled eggs, lettuce wrap with avocado and cilantro. Are y'all really going to make this? Because I'm not going to make that. I'm not going to put cilantro in my eggs. It's not happening. And I'm not going to make it in a wrap for breakfast. I'm sorry. Um, then we have bell pepper with guacamole. That's your snack. Y'all really want meal plans? Okay, so let's just take these meal plans and we'll set them aside for what we don't want, okay? So y'all go to that food list, print that joker out. Well, don't print it out. Put it in your phone. Go shopping. And then you get home with that stuff and you say, what do I want to have this week? You can have spaghetti. You can have fettuccine. You can have fried chicken. You can have fried pork chops. You can have fried shrimp. You can have a Caesar salad. You can have cucumbers. You can have... Oh, chicken salad. You can have all kinds of good stuff, guys. You don't need that meal plan. What you need is you need to know what you like. Oh, <laughs> never mind, right? <laughs> you need to know what you like. Like, what is a frittata? I don't know, guys. I don't know what a frittata is. I'm not going to eat a frittata. I'm not going to eat prosciutto or whatever. I'm not doing it. I like my fried cheese, my boiled eggs, my fried eggs. I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to go through Hardy's drive through and I'm going to get me a low-carb wrap. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go and I'm going to eat some wings and some salad on Thursday when my fast is over. Thursday night, wings and salad, Rex, steakhouse. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do right away. So, um, 
You guys were an amazing group tonight. We got through a lot of good stuff. I hope that you guys were not only educated, but slightly entertained. I hope you now know that you really don't want a meal plan. Take these items that we went over, put them in your binder. Take the other ones. And the one thing I want to teach you guys to do is to what? Read. R-E-A-D. I want to teach you guys to read. Read everything. Read your labels. Read directions. Read everything. If you didn't learn, but those two things, you're doing good. Go get yourself some calcium, potassium, pink Himalayan salt. Get on it. I don't want to go over my hour too much. I've already kept y'all long enough. It's getting late. I had a blast. Y'all leave me some feedback. Leave me some questions. And, oh, here we go. Let's see. I have one last thing I'm going to cover. I had some questions. Um, been doing a lot of keto research and reading how to prepare. Uh, food list. We went over that. Uh, caffeine is actually awesome for keto. All the caffeine is good, good, good. Um, I think that's it. So you guys should have learned a lot. Um, ketone, exogenous ketone supplements. I definitely recommend them. I do them. The ones that I have, inbox me. I'll definitely get back with you. What do you think of Chipotle's new keto bowls? I have not checked them out, but... Um, I'm thinking Chipotle's new keto bowls will probably be pretty good. Um, as long as it doesn't have rice... Um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, um, a tortilla or beans, you're golden. You should be really good to go. You can Google it and look it up. Thank you guys so much for showing up. I'm so glad that you learned lots and lots and lots. I will see you next Tuesday night, same place, same time, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Invite your friends. You guys are the bomb. You are in the creme de la creme. You are my success group. So you are 2%, guys. 2%, no rice, 2%. 2% of the people who said they were going to be here, you guys are the 2%. So you guys absolutely rock. I'm so proud of you. You are going to succeed. So I will see you guys next Tuesday. Y'all have a wonderful night. Thanks so much for watching. You're so welcome. You're so welcome. You guys were awesome. I'll try and do my hair differently.